Welcome back to Minding Our Businesses, where CEO and COO sisters share unfiltered conversation about running three companies together and and the the real real life between between it all. Season two. Season two. We just made up that season two was a thing. (laughs) Did (laughs) you hear the way I just said? There really was no season one, season two, but it was more like we ran out of content for the first part of the episodes pre-pregnancy. Yeah, and then you popped out a child. Sure did pop out a child. Popping out the child. I popped out the baby out of my vagina. Ew, ew. I'm sorry. Vagina in the first three seconds, we're out. Um, So we're talking about today, I actually did a poll and I was like asking all the Instagram followers. You've been loving your polls. I do like polls. What do you want to talk about? What do you want us to talk about? And the most common answer is balancing it all. How do you balance it all? How are you doing balancing it all with two kids now? How are you doing balancing Mm. it all, planning a wedding and just randomly adopting a third dog? Mm. Um, And Mm -hmm. so I thought we could like go into banter about that. I think it's so funny. Like people ask, how do you balance it at all? And I literally don't know the answer to those questions. I have to, those, like when people ask like, how are you confident or how are you balancing it all? It's like not something I'm cognitively thinking about. Yeah. So I have to like definitely do the homework to figure out the answer. A hundred percent. When I was digging into the answer last night, I was like, oh, well today is my first day back at work. Like actually using my brain like a functional human. And I think if you've never been in maternity leave before, like ever had a baby before, you don't really realize that your brain sort of goes into like mush mode. (laughs) Like my life. Are you saying like mushed banana mode? That's part of it. That's part of it. Like your physical mush, physical mushy food. But also like you're so cyclically taking care of a child that like my brain is not being used for certain things it once was. So like in terms of how am I balancing it all, how I once was balancing it all is different than how I'm doing that now. You're adaptive. I'm adapting. I am adapting presently. I'm learning how to balance it now. Um, and I think I, I obviously have never had a child, so I can't speak to it, but it's definitely probably a learn as you go moment. Now that you have two, you probably do things differently with Sadie than you first did with Lily. Oh, totally. My, my life, one baby, having one baby drastically changes your life. Then having two babies in one year, you're crazy. My life has literally just completely changed for the most be- Mike and I are calling this era the beautiful chaos era. Absolutely. That's the only way we can describe it. I feel it. like my whole life is beautiful chaos. Yeah, I mean, like maybe- where when is there not beautiful chaos? I don't even know if that's just for you two. Maybe that's how you can balance it all is by embracing that it's just always going to be beautiful chaos that you'll never get to a point where it will feel calm. I know. I turned 30 today and I feel It's your 30th birthday. I literally immediately looked in the mirror and was like, is my skin old now? Like, <laughs> well, yes. So like you turn 20, you go from 29 to 30 and on that day you get additional wrinkles. Oh, I feel like it. <laughs> but you just had Botox, so you look good. Yeah. <laughs> Inject me. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a lot going on. You have three dogs. I have three dogs. You're a homeowner. I'm a homeowner. You run three businesses. You're planning a wedding. Um, you've been doing all this while I'm on my maternity leave, Mm. doing it like a queen, Mm. I must say. Thank you. I just had two babies in one year running three businesses, own a home, home, wife, all these things. And, you know, there's so much flying at my head at all times. And I think for me, it's about influencer. Um, yeah, that's what you want me to be. (laughs) I want to dig a hole and bury myself in it. It's to be said though, like content creation takes a long time. Yeah, content creation's a That's another motherfucker. A motherfucker. Well, no, it actually is because I yeah. have to remain I have to remain relevant on social media and I need to remain, you know, present. I have to show a presence on social media and making that content takes a long time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, everything. I, I was actually like when I was deep diving into this conversation, I was talking to Mike about it. I was like, how do you think this all happens? The balancing of it all, because I like I'm not definitely not at my peak best right now. Like yesterday, I just completely missed my dentist appointment. Definitely just completely forgot that it even happened. I dropped a little bag of 
my cash yesterday, just like on a <laughs> on a table. Your coin purse. I left my. I left it. Just like thought I had it, didn't have it. Like my well, brain is not the same. I think you're human. You mean because yeah, maybe I'm human. Yeah, I think you hold yourself to this thing where like you don't do those things. Like that's pretty normal, ma'am. Well, yeah, it's it's. I think it's just you know getting used to it. I wrote that. Um, to me, this was like a lot about presence because like balancing it all, like I think people get stressed about that. There's this quote I love that has given me so much peace over time. Um, I'm going to read it to you. It's, if you are depressed, you're living in the past. Mm -hmm. If you're anxious, you're living in the future. <clears throat> and if you're at peace, you're living in the present. I know. I read that when you said that. The, I've Lao seen Tzu. We got to give credit where credit's due. Sorry. Lao Tzu. Lao Tzu. Um, but the, if you are anxious, you are living in the future spoke to me. I've seen that before somewhere. So I don't know I where. I said it to you. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but I feel like everybody lives in the future and it, it takes time to like not do that. It like, you have to really work on, you have to work, you have on, to work it. on it. No, you have to work. I made fun of Carly because Shut in up. almost every episode in season two, she said you have to work on you it. You have to work on it. No, but in your brain, like there's things that like I say inside my brain and then there's things I say to other people and I've really tried and now I'm going into my thirties. I'm leaving that in the, my 29. I love that you're manifesting. Well, thank you, Rachel. But I was in my 29th year. I was starting to do that anyways. I was using the thing I learned from Erica about the cancel clear. Mm -hmm. It actually really fucking works. It's absolutely insane. I, I don't know why you couldn't have listened to that information when I, I gave it think, to you. I don't think there's always information sometimes you're ready to hear. True. You have to be I, ready I think to there's, hear it. I think you have to hear information on your own sometimes or or you hear it so many times and then you start doing it on your own I get that. when it works for you. I've been out in public and people look at me and they're like, cancel clear. I'm like, <laughs> I love you. No, cancel clear works. And especially for us anxious girlies out there or just anxious people in general. I mean, I'm sure also most people I would say suffer from some sort of anxiety in the moment. It really helps because it stops your brain before it becomes an emotion. I thought that was something Erica yeah. said. And then you don't feel it anymore. Well, I don't know if humans were meant to live at the pace that we live at. Yeah. Like I'm always at this like cross between like being this meditative person that wants to sit in a chair and like be quiet and like listen to the universe message. And then being this hustler that like wants to work her ass off. Like I'm definitely split personality in terms of balancing it all. That's another thing I need to balance. Like, these two qualities of myself because like everything we're doing is so fast. You yeah. know what I mean? But like the bringing it back to that quote and like what you were just saying about like anxiousness is like, I think anxiousness can come from the speed of life to mm -hmm. like how much we all need to balance in, in this current modern life we're living. Am I not doing this fast enough? Did I not get proposed to in the time I wanted to? Yeah. Am I not having kids at the time frame I wanted to? I feel like I struggle. I used to struggle more with that, but I, I think something like, I don't know if it's, how do you balance it all? It's like, how do you also react to the things that you don't feel like you can balance too? Amen. Because, because there's no, no one's going to look at me and say, or no one's going to say to me, you balance it all. Well, I think to say, like, when you get asked the question about balancing it all, something important to remember is that like, it's not possible to like be perfect in those moments. Like there's yeah. times where like I'm balancing a lot, but like, no, I'm also making a lot of mistakes. And I think that's okay. And as, as long as you learn from them or you take a moment to pause and slow down, it's super, super important. Like we just did the parlor quarterly mm -hmm. and that was my moment to like really slow down and understand, okay, this is what we need to focus on for the next quarter. Yeah. This quarter I killed it. I did really well, but there's things I could have done better. And I, and yep. I take that in my personal life as well. Like the way I react to something that happens in my wedding. And I know we'll get into that a little bit deeper. It's like, there's ways to handle those things and there's ways to like not react. So it's like stress you out. Yep. Um, and like learning what way works for you, I think is super important. I think everyone's different. I, agree. I wrote in, when I was like kind of preparing for this, I was journaling. I wrote the word surrender to me, balancing it all is about surrendering, mm. but like with no ego. Yeah. Right. Like I, I surrendered to the fact that I completely didn't go to my dentist appointment that like I've, I've been a little bit more forgetful about things. Um, you know, like and I get that feeling because we're in that industry service space. Like if you forget an appointment, you're like, oh, oh my God, I fell off. I know it's the worst. Because I really did not 
genuinely mean to do that. And I'm like, my God, wow, I really, it really escaped my mind. That's why I like to put myself in people's shoes when they do that at the salon or something like yeah. that. Cause you know, shit happens. Honestly, it, does. it just it happens. Does. But surrendering and being present, that quote, like if you're depressed, you're living in the past. First of all, the past, the past doesn't exist in Taoism. You can reminisce on the past. I mean, in life, it doesn't exist, but if you are depressed, then that means you're reminiscing on something that once was, but it's gone, right? Like right. it's just over. If you're anxious, you're living in the future, but the future doesn't yet exist. I think it's a lot about, it's okay. Lauren just put her phone on. It's fine. We'll keep that part because it's real life. Authent Lauren. Authenticity. Lauren. <laughs> Noah's going to be so mad. Noah's here now too. Blessings on blessings. Hi, Noe. Hi, Noe. Um, No probs. Uh, if you're at peace, you're living in the present. Being in the present is one of the hardest things to constantly be. Yeah. Right? Like how how present are you is something I'm asking myself at every single moment. Am I when I'm looking at Lily, am I on my phone? Yes. Sometimes I am. And I'm like, no, terrible idea. Be present with your daughter your daughter. She's only gonna be this age for one day. Yeah. Something about presence too just comes up is like honesty or like being honest with yourself. Like there's times where like I just like would ignore things like with my health or with something with the wedding or like, like, cause I completely changed my wedding because it didn't feel right to me. Yeah. Like, or like I knew I needed to lose weight, not just for my wedding, but for myself or, you know, like just like not ignoring like the truth and like actually making strides to like do the things that are making you anxious or making you feel to depressed. To put the work in. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't mean it in that way, but I agree with you. It's I hard to be honest with yourself. Like when I went to the doctor on Monday, like I was telling her things, she was like, why didn't you come last year? Or why didn't you tell me this last year? I was like, I wasn't being honest with myself. Truly. I was pretending they weren't happening. And then I was like, you know, are you referencing like just going balancing it all? You're working on your lifestyle and your health yeah, like right you now. You have to be honest with the things that you need to work on and then they'll get better. You know? Yeah. I get that. Totally. Well, that's how I am balancing it all in terms of right. like, if I had a day where I could have given the company a little bit more attention in a certain way, I recognize that I'm honest with myself and carry on. I think it's also about not tripping up on that moment. Yeah. Like it just carry the fuck on. Like if you made a mistake or if you forgot something, Oh, this is how you can be better about it next time. You yeah. Know? That's why I love Joe though, because he's my counterpart in that. Cause like I'll go home and be like, this happened, this happened, this happened. And I can't stop thinking about this. And he's like, move on, let it go. And you're the same. You've taught me that. Carry on. And surrounding yourself, and I we, we've beat a head, beat a dead horse on this, but surrounding like why does that phrase exist? What beat a dead horse? That's a terrible thing to say. It is a horrible saying. I've I actually never am never saying it again. It. I don't want to say it anymore. But surrounding yourself with people who are high vibration, who can then bring you back up to a vibration that you need to be brought up to when you're in like a shitty mindset, mm -hmm. helps a lot. Who are you? Thirty. <laughs> She's 30, flirty, and thriving. I'm reading a good book, though. Um, Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people also, like, require full attention, 100% yeah. attention. Mike and I were talking about this yesterday because I forget what we were talking about. Like, I think, what, what was I forgetful on? And he was, like, shitting on me for it. I left something open. I don't fucking know. I don't, I can't even remember the example, but we were talking, I was like, you know what, Mike, like a lot of people want a hundred percent of my attention. It's not that I'm not paying attention to the small things. It's that I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm, when I'm on the phone with someone, I am a hundred percent giving them my presence. So mm -hmm. it's like each thing I'm pulled in so many different right. directions. I do think there are tactical ways that you can apply certain things or things that we're doing to get more done or, Definitely. or balance it all a little bit better. So we did polls, like I said, and asked user generated questions, what nosy neighbor questions you would want to know the answers to about our lives right now with mm -hmm. all the things that are going on. So I printed them out. Um, some were directed at both of us. Some were directed at one or the other. Um, so I wrote out like when it was going to be both. The first question was, what does a typical day in the life look like for you right now? Do you want to go first? Yeah, mine's probably shorter than yours. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wake up. I always, I, I know dogs aren't kids, but I always give at least like two minutes of attention to each one of my dogs because I love them so much. I love that. Carly um, has three dogs. I have three dogs. She adopted a third dog. I adopted a third dog and one. I don't regret it and I don't care. And dogs, honestly, I have realized bring me the most joy in this lifetime. Well, then get and forth. No, um, I'm good on the three um, and I, I love them to death. But like the love you get from a dog is just like, 
a different kind of love. It's and unconditional. It, yeah, it's unconditional, but it's just like simple. Well, that's why they're therapy though. People say that. I love them so much and they've helped me in this lifetime and I could not live specifically without Ollie. So just let everyone know. I love to hear it. Um, so I wake up, I wake up a little bit earlier than I used to what because time? 6.30. Nice. Love a 6.30. Love a seven o'clocker though. Like I, I, I like my sleep. I really enjoy my sleep. I need my sleep. Happy for you. Thank you so much. Um, I go downstairs and let my dogs out. That's the second thing I do. Um, dog, dog. Dog, dog. Both dogs. Um, and then I ignore them for the rest. So I'll go do my makeup. I'll get dressed. I'll do my whole thing. Um, and then I leave extra time. This is new for my new routine to like make my lunch, bring snacks, and to have like a healthy day. Love that. And I'm always filling my water bottle. Like I always find this water bottle, the 50 ounce water bottle, and I fill it, make it, and I make sure I have all the things that I need. That was always something I was jealous of with other people. I was like, how do you have the time to like bring your water and your coffee and your juice and your orange? You and make your, time. But you, it feels so good to leave with my lunchbox or my lunch and like it's 12 o'clock and be like, I made my lunch today. So that's a new moment because I really care about being healthy. Um recently and forever. And, um, then I'll drive to work and I'll listen to a, a book if I'm feeling like it, if there's like a, a moment where I feel like it, or I'll listen to like hype up music just for my day, like just to get me ready for the day. But typically it's been books or podcasts recently. Sorry, not podcast books. Um, I realized recently I listened to really intense music in the car when I'm not listening. I also to repeat the same song, say, drive I'll to say. work, get to work. And then I start my day, do my whole, do my whole thing. And I'm really present at work. Like I really care about being present at work. Like Joe will text me. And like, if he calls me, I know it's important, but like I, I'm the girl in the group chat that like didn't read the whole chat. And like, I text them back at like five or six o'clock and they all Same. hate, they all hate me. And they're like, shut up basically. Like, don't even ask us what happened. Cause the we just talked ended. the whole day. Yeah. Like I'm that girl. Um, and then I'll go home I've been trying to get to seven to 10,000 steps every day. So I'll either go for a walk Good or I'll get somehow to the 10,000 steps. Um, one day a week during the work week, I'll go to the gym. Um, but typically I leave that moment for the like Friday, Saturday, Sunday moments. Cause it's just, it seems easier for me and just mm -hmm. like more relaxed to go. Um, but I'll always make myself dinner. Like dinner is a thing, even if I'm alone. Cause Joe works nights. If Joe is home, I'll make like a better exuberant dinner. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really care about that. And then housewife housewife. And then I'll watch TV, like trash TV. I love it. And that's my thing. And then I go to bed really early, what like eight thirty, nine o'clock. I'm in bed. Wow. It's a nice day. Yeah. And I'll bring my water to the side of my bed and I'll chug it so I can Smart. get, get the, get the water in. Smart. I love that. You Thanks. balanced, you balanced it all on that day. I did. And I, I watched TikTok too. Cause I feel like it teaches me things love in small TikTok. times. TikTok applies directly to our agency and to everything we're doing. So to me, TikTok time feels very productive. So my schedule right now is very, very based on the newborn life. Um, obviously, Sadie's 10 weeks old right now, and I'm not even fully back at work. I'm still very much so in my maternity leave, and she needs me so much. But I'll give you a rundown of what the schedule is right now with a newborn, because I think it's so different for everybody. Um, so what I've noticed is Sadie's entire life and schedule and habits and everything she is and does is very, very similar to Lily. I don't know if that's a that's reflection great. of me or if that's, is. I have no idea where that's coming from. They have from. good demeanor. They, she has a nice demeanor. She definitely, I'll get to the colic hour, but so we wake up at either 3 a.m. or 4.30 a.m., depending on how, when her last feed was. Kill me. It's a lot. Um, and so she, when she wakes up, she wants a, about a four to six ounce bottle. I give her a feed, but the hard part about the night feedings is that you can't put them down until they've burped. Right. And because they eat slower in the night, they don't burp as fast. So I'm like exhausted trying to stay awake and I'm like kind of like zoning in and out and she is not burping. That <laughs> middle, and it's hard. That <laughs> middle time of waking up in the middle of the night, it's like, you're like, am I going to go back to sleep or am I up? for the rest of the day you're also so tired that and you're like hard. burping and like can't see straight like I can't see straight it's so awful. I keep a nightlight on I keep my phone next to me just in case and you know Mike's there I, I wake up in the night feedings it's just easier because like you know I just I'm better with the newborn I mean he's amazing but like I can get it faster I feel like it's my responsibility to go get up with the newborn in the night um I am not breastfeeding so I am doing bottle but I put a baby breeze in my room which has been like a game changer so we do that feed and then I put her back to bed after we get the burp then she usually wakes up around 5 30 a.m again 
Um, and she's fussing and has a little bit of gas. So at that point, she I've noticed that she will not go back to sleep unless she's in my arms. So I will put her wrap, I'll change her diaper, wrap her up, put her in my arms and let her sleep in my arms until Lily wakes up at 6.30. Sweetie. And then this is when chaos starts. Mm, so Mike, will, Mike wakes up at 4.30 and he's working from 4.30 to 6.30. And then we meet in the middle when the 6 30 a.m wake up happens so lily wakes up we let her lay in bed for 30 minutes and then everyone's awake and then it's tough because i have two babies like it's not just you know they're it's not at different ages lily just started to no walk. i've been with you it's it's tough especially at lily's age too because like you have to watch them consistently oh my god she could be like in eating a battery in 13 seconds like she needs to be shields all up. shields up but she needs to be all eyes on her like she needs attention. Um, and also I don't want her to feel jealous or whatever. She's so cognizant too. Like she, she wants what she wants. hundred percent. So then we play upstairs for a little bit and what I, Mike and I switch. So it's all about like the choreography of Mike and I. Right. So he'll take Sadie downstairs and put her in the swing and then he'll sit with her with his laptop and get his day started. And then I'll bring Lily into the bathroom with me, shut the door and let her play on the floor while I get, do my hair and makeup, which I do my hair and makeup every single day, despite not leaving the house, even if I'm staying in all day, because it's for me. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like a human. And then I'll also get dressed. I'll put my shoes on and make it feel like I am a person, a person. That is like one of my postpartum tricks for me personally. That helps me a lot. I think that's really smart because it makes it feel like you're leaving the house and like living a normal lifestyle. It makes me want to leave the house if I can, if I can. Um, and then we all meet downstairs in the kitchen for breakfast. What happens is, is we put Lily in the playpen and Sadie in the swing and Lily watches Blue's Clues. Mike does the dishes. This is exactly what happens every morning like you could time it and I it takes me 20 minutes to make the coffee I make the coffee I make breakfast for everybody and then I clean the kitchen literally in that exact order I get it all done and then the day begins one of the nannies arrives which is either my mom or the nanny and basically they're helping me with one of the kids and then Mike works out of his office the whole day basically consists of you know feedings and um, me taking calls with you and you asking me different things. And then sometimes I'll get like moments where I can listen to a book and I'll try to like stimulate my mind. So it's not just mushy bananas and blues clues um, because like blue skadoo, you can too is like replaying in I my head. I can't believe blues clues is still a thing. Love blues clues, love Elmo. For me, um, when nap time rolls around, there's a three hour span of time when Lily naps from 1230 to 330. That is when I try to get work done, I try to do emails, try to do something productive, try to go for a walk or do something. Um, and then I'll let the nanny take over with Sadie at that time if I can, or I'll take her for like a walk or something. Um, and, or I'll come here, get a blowout, try to just like integrate myself into life, go to CVS, go to Whole Foods, do something um, just so I can like see human life and not feel, you know, claustrophobic. Yeah. Um, and then Lily- well, no, I think for people listening, that's good to hear because a lot. I'm sure we have a lot of mother listeners. Definitely, and I think it's you have to be selfish even with your children. Sometimes oh my, I need some separation for sure. You have to, but there's so much guilt. I mean, like I <laughs> want to be there the second Lily wakes up from her nap I because I do not want her to feel like I'm not there for her. It's like a really, it's like a tormenting feeling. So and they're young and they don't know, and I understand. But they feel like I want them to always feel me as the mother that always held them and was there for them. Like that's so important to me. And I want to like I like balancing it all. I want her to feel that, but I also want my employees to feel that and my companies to it's feel that. It's super weird to watch people that you like are very close to be mothers. Like it's really Different like a chapter. It's an outer body experience. It it's a hundred. It's good to be able to be around it too to like also prepare for when you want to be a mom. Because like I had no. Well, I, you're definitely soaking it in. I did not know to the extent you don't know. Until you do it. Yeah. No, it's, it's, and it's crazy. Then Lily wakes up from her nap and it's about three 30. And then this is like three 30 to seven 30 is usually the hardest time with like babies and toddlers because it's like, holy shit. There's so much time. They're like tired to entertain them. Like, yeah. it's like, what the fuck do you do? You try to get them to eat. Then you, but you've done the TV time. You don't want to do any more TV time. Like you can't go outside if it's raining. Like there's always things like yeah. whatever. So just to kind of wrap this up, basically Mike and I meet back in the kitchen at dinner time. He's done at five. We meet there. Um, we usually don't have help past five o'clock and then bedtime is usually the hardest um with like I just did bedtime for the first time alone last night because um Mike had a, a work function and it was chaotic I mean like I have two babies that almost can't walk they both need to be held so it's hard to go from room to room like that's something I didn't realize would be a difficult thing is going from the kitchen 
to upstairs is difficult. Yeah. I can't get Did up you carry there. them both up the stairs? So what happened was is someone showed up at my door at 6 p.m. last night. Ooh. I was alone. Some guy was going to do some estimate on the glass doors that I need replaced. And I... Did the, you have him watch your child? No. Well, oh. so he he's knocking on the door. I'm holding both of them. And I'm like, I, you know, a newborn is you have to hold with almost two hands. And yeah. Lily is squirming. And the guys at the door, my dog bites people. Like, Harry's like about to attack this guy. And I'm like... I'm so sorry. Like you can't come in right now. Like I need, I need a second. Did you send him away? I sent him away because like Harry was going to attack him. I couldn't hold both girls. I had to get up the stairs. It was too much. So, um, but at that point, Mike and I will do dinner. We'll eat pretty early. I like to have a home cooked meal as well. And it's really important to me that my, that Lily eats organic, healthy, that she has like a macro dense, macronutrient dense meal that she's having, you know, a really nice vegetable that she's having protein and that she's having, you know, some sort of carb. And I spend about an hour making her dinner and then she throws it on the floor in about a minute. It's hard. I feel like with the one word that comes to mind, like when you have kids, like it really tests your patience. Oh my. So if you're not meditate at all times, if you're not like already like working on that, like get on it before (laughs) you're a mom. Immediately. (laughs) Because like you don't have those moments where you like dogs are so different where you can just like put them in the crate. They can go away and you're turning the TV on and like sitting down. There's like no it just, there's none away. of that. No, there's none of that. So then I, I also in the eat. best way. Yeah, no, it's beautiful. chaos. Yeah. That, that beautiful chaos era. So then we do dinner. Then we all Mike and I are like eating at like five 30 now. It's like losers. Di- it's so early. It's like ridiculous losers. Then we have to travel upstairs. So Mike and I will do like a quick clean of the kitchen. We'll put the girls in front of the TV for again, again, for a second, we'll do a quick sweep. We'll get every, get the dogs fed because now we can't put the dog bowls on the floor anymore during the day. Cause Lily dumps the kibble upside down and dumps the water every chance she can, which is honestly she likes the new food. She we got likes to pick each piece of kibble up and put it in the bowl for like an hour. Disgusting, it's Lily. crazy. And then we go upstairs and do bedtime. Mike switches to Sadie. I take a bath with Lily. And then we, Lily goes to bed at 7.30. And, and then, then you're free. Nope. Then Sadie goes into her colic hour. And for those of you who don't know, that means that there's some, it's not because of the formula. It's not because of anything, but my baby just will tighten. And all of a sudden she needs two hands attention at all times and I have to help her get the gas out she's so sweet so it's like from 7 30 to 10 o'clock right when I'm like about to like smoke a joint and like chill out and like relax I literally can't because she needs my full attention and it's like I have you gotten it down more it's decreasing but That's it's good it's we're definitely trending in a good direction but like she needs my attention and yeah. I have to give it to her and it's like sometimes you're calling me and sometimes mom's calling me and she's like mammy needs something and it's, it's too like, much at times I have to just stop and be like, I can only do one thing at a time. You're being honest with yourself. I'm being honest with myself. I have to do, I have to surrender to the moment, surrender to the presence. And I have to be like, I, my child needs my attention right now. She needs help with her I'm gas. I'm not doing anything else. I'm not doing anything 100%. else. So I'll put my phone away and I'll say, I am not able to do this at this time. I agree. Um, and then by the time I get Sadie down, I am so dead and so tired. I'll smoke like two hits of a J and then I will literally pass out. I pass out to the depths of deadness that no one could understand. Like <laughs> I am a dead gorilla drooling into my pregnancy pillow, which I still sleep with and I can't function. Anymore. I hate that fucking pillow. Hold on. Let me just say this. Then it's three 30 and it starts. Again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it sounds awful. <laughs> that I knew three, my day was going to sound way better that than three 30 and it starts again. And I'm like, uh, 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 uh. it's like on repeat. Then no. you guys are calling me from level 10s and you're like, what should we do about this? And I'm like, I don't think I have a brain anymore. <laughs> no, honestly, that just sounded miserable. I was like waiting for you to be done to be like, I'm going to cry. Yeah. So yeah, it's surrendering, but we're happy. I love it. Yeah. I don't regret it. I want every second of it, but it, you know, balancing it all is the theme. So Carly, where's your wedding? <laughs> um, it's in Sarasota, Florida. How's wedding planning going? It's going wonderful. Honestly, I literally love it. I think for me, it wasn't feeling right. For those of you that don't know, I had a whole wedding planned in Newport, Rhode Island, Um, but it just never felt me. Like it just never felt correct. Um, And I made the impromptu decision to act on my emotions because it's like one of those things that like you can't take back. And I want it to be special for me and Joe. So we so like, like, you're there now though. Oh no, I'm it so happy. So special. I'm so happy with our decision and it just feels so right. And we're getting married in Sarasota. It's at this little like, um, estate that looks like somewhat of Italy. And obviously that's where we met. Well, that's not obvious. People don't know that you we met, met in Italy, study abroad. 
And um, I wanted a place that like reminded me of Italy without going to Italy because I think it's a little annoying to go there. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just a bit of a trip. Yeah, it's like literally so long and it's <laughs> crazy. But so we found the place. Um, it's going well. I started a little lifestyle journey, um, lifestyle health change in January, which I was trying to do last year. But like I do really well with like deadlines and like logical planning. Well, you want, I think it, it gave you a little fire. It gave me a little ass. fire. Yeah. No, I always have to wait to the last minute, which I highly recommend. I kept looking at you and I was like, Hey, um, do you want to like start your diet? Shut up. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I do regret I didn't start earlier, but I'm just trying to go with the positive side and just be like, I started. You're killing it. And I'm not like putting so much pressure on it either. Like it's just working the way I'm doing it. I have like a TikTok trainer I found. Shout out to TikTok forever. Um, And I love her and she checks in with me every Wednesday and I've just been drinking more water and like moving my body more and eating. You're creating lifestyle Eating in a calorie deficit and it just, it feels so right. It feels so real and it feels just like a part of my routine now. Mm -hmm. I always wished in that moment where I was like I can't wait to get to that place where it's like it feels just like real life and I'm not just like wishing oh you're here and I'm here and I love it and I'm happy and it just feels amazing I think I think she's hydrated she's She's a hydrated in her bridal era to ask me like how's it going like I I don't choose to go the path of being stressed out about wedding planning like I don't get it I don't agree to it and I will not do it. I th- feels a little bit superficial to me. I, I just like the whole, like, are you so stressed out? It's like, not that I'm stressed. I find it more annoying than stressful. Agreed. We can have a little you know definition what I mean? change. Like I find it more just like tedious and annoying mm-hmm. and like gathering the freaking like just went fully cross-eyed addresses, fully cross-eyed, <laughs> whatever. So I find that uh, most people talk about wedding planning in this like negative way. And I definitely find that it's a little bit annoying and tedious, but I'm doing really well with it. And honestly, I'm the kind of girl that like plans immediately. And now I'm kind of just sitting, that's sitting that, that's coasting. Not, that's not you're the kind of girl. Wedding planning goes in ebbs and flows. You're just in a down flow. Right All right. Now. So I'm not that kind of girl, but I did get everything done immediately. I think it gets stressful closer to date. That's what I'll say. I was just going to say to you. So like, even when I had to like close on something immediately where it was like that contract thing and the girl was like, if you don't sign the contract, you're not going to get the price. Like I did have a moment of panic. Of course. Um, but other than that, like I'm really happy with the way it's going and I feel great about the decision. I'm so excited for your wedding. Me too. I can't wait. We're going dress shopping in three weeks, but does that stress you out? It doesn't stress me out. I just want to find the correct dress for me. And I don't want to find it if I don't feel happy in my body. Yet, We're you starting know? at Vows Bridal Outlet. Yeah. Where I, where I started my crazy? journey in Massachusetts. Yeah. Hopefully we'll find it. So. I think we will. I'm feeling positive about it. I said, texted you last night and said that everything always turns out better than you expected. And I think that that is a true statement. This for is your true. Life. This is true. So you asked me the next question. I'm going to ask you the next question. Okay. Um, do you feel like you changed as a person when you became a mom of two? And did it change how you feel about working? Um, yeah. So this one came through on Instagram and it was, I caused me to go into deep thought. Um, yes. I feel like I changed drastically when I became a mom of two. Um, I, for the love just multiplies. Like everyone asks, like, do you feel the same about your second baby that you did about your first? And it's like, Oh, absolutely. Right. The, the, absolutely. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it's, it's really true though. It's like Andrew Rubin, if you're listening, it's the weirdest thing ever. It's like all of a sudden your heart just makes space for like this other child. It's the weirdest thing ever that you can add to your family. I think it's so weird. It's you can crazy. Add to like who told you you could just add when you wanted to God <laughs> sperm. Um, I mean, for me, I feel like I'm like this weird neat freak right now Ew. and I'm on this like journey of, over it. of organization I can't explain it to you I'll never be able to express it to you because you know over time I have not been like the most organized person but it's actually been helping me balance it all I kind of feel like you have no choice like I don't have a no because like when I'm watching Lily and you're not there or like you're away or something I have to know where the pants are I have to know what the socks are like you oh can't my God. because so many people are in your home too you have you're to be extra so organized right maybe that is why that's where that's coming from too is because like because you're a perfectionist I with those things and you that. want people to take care of your child the way you would but I the, wasn't the only way that we can do that for you is if it's set up in the way that we can just pick. I guess that's well that's true because like I have all of her little snacks together yeah. I have all of her like dinners together I have her pants draw I have her you know her shoes it's together. helpful though so it's Good job. I love it. I love it. So that is something I did not expect. And how do I feel about working as a mom of two? 
I recently I was sad. Like I've been a little upset because I feel like my life's purpose is to raise these children. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to work like that. That has run through my, th- my head before. And I'm like, but that happened to me with the first maternity leave too. And I was like, I can't leave them. I can't leave them. I can't leave them. I can't leave them. And I would come to work and I would cry in the bathroom, like on my first maternity leave. Cause I was like, so I felt so guilty that like I had just birthed this child. And I was like, I have to leave you with somebody else. It's my job. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I have another baby that needs my attention. And I'm like, do I care about money? Do I care about success? Do I care about these things? Or should I just go live in a field and be naked and breastfeed my child? Like, Ew. which, which should I be? You're you know, not doing that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm so sorry. No, <laughs> no, I was taking a break. No, but like then I started to do little things. Like I've been challenging myself to do little work things. And I've been like trying to like take some meetings and take, do some things and come back in. And all of a sudden I feel like me again. And I'm like, holy shit, I love work. Like work fucking fuels me. You know what's funny is I I can't, again, I can't like, uh, like feel what it feels like to leave a child. But I think, well, the child leaves your body. Yeah, no, no, I, I can't speak to that at all. But like, I would understand like when I see Lily and Sadie, I don't even want to leave them. And it's one moment. It's, it's one, it's pain. It's a, it's a love. It's a, something that's, um, the related bond. to you. It's really weird. It's a weird feeling. I've never had that obviously, but I think, um, you can have both. Well, so that's what I'm learning as time goes on. Like, it's interesting. Cause like once you get a taste for it, you're like, okay, I need to do both. And I love both. Oh, I have to do both. I have to do both. I love both. It's what happens is what I was saying earlier is like your brain turns to mush in yeah. the newborn stage. So you have to surrender to the fact like, you know, for 12 weeks, you are going to be mushy. And it's like, my, my stomach's mushy, my legs are mushy, my ass is mushy, and literally the bananas on my floor are mushy, and my brain is not working. So like, you, know, you have to surrender to that, you have to know it. If you, if you don't expect that, and you think that won't be the case for you, you're fucked. So you have to just like surrender, know what's gonna happen, and then know that, that something else is coming. Like it's one day you'll get used to it. And like I'm at the 10 week mark, almost 11. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm starting to get the hang of my routine. I know what this looks like. I think it was easier for the second for you. Yes. Because just even like you let me hold Sadie immediately. And not that you, not that you were saying no, you I was wouldn't. protective. I was protective. For sure. And I, and I get it. But like, it's just like, I think it's, I feel like that was how, that's how mom was too. I feel like she probably was the same where like you get a little less protective a mm-hmm. little bit and it becomes easier for you because you need more things and you need to go get a blow dry and you need to yes. get your nails done and feel good about yourself. I, I have to. And then but like people don't realize like when you leave the house for the first time in like the newborn phase, like in terms of working, like when you're out and you see other humans, you're like, oh my God, like I forgot what real life was like. For people who don't have kids, I wonder, and obviously you can't compare these two, but I, I, it reminds me of like going on vacation and like you're in this like different boat, different brain mindset, yeah, or different mindset. It's not necessarily the same exact thing. You didn't push a child out of you, but like your brain just shifts from these different mindsets and these different, different places of your life. It's, yep. it's actually kind of crazy. Well, yes and no, it was, it was, I will talk about this later because this was one of the questions, but people talk a lot about on TikTok, like, was it harder for you to go from zero to one kids or for one to two? Just speak on it now. Okay, I will speak on it now. Um, For me, it was harder to go from one to two kids than it was to go from zero to one. Um, And the reason was is because I I had two babies, like I said, Um, but actually the worry, you know how we've talked about worry in the past, the Mm. worry increases, like it multiplies times two. Right. Because there's more things. Cancel clear. Well, it's not necessarily, it's, it's worry equals love. Right? Like it's a frequency of love. I know. I have to remind myself of those things sometimes because I feel like sometimes I have this like devilish brain and I'm like, why are you even thinking about that? Well, that's your subconscious having contrast. It's like so weird. Why do you even go to that? But then I think to myself, it's just be, and I do it to Ollie. So then I know that like, it's not just people. It's like things that I love so deeply. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, the anxiety strikes in and I'm like. Presence. Presence. Yeah. Presence. You need to surrender. You need to. Totally. Go back. But like your relationship with yourself is so important in those moments because you need to know how to like talk to yourself down out of those moments. Well, also to your point, you matter. Like I matter. You do. I can't just devote my entire life to my children. When I come to work, like I got came to work today. It was my first full day of like yeah. preparing. I feel 
purpose filled. But I, and I feel that pretty and about I like our the mom. way I look. Yeah. I loved that about Me our too. mom and what I know now in our work ethic is like, there's one thing I want to teach my kids and that's work ethic. That's super important. I agree. And I think there's having other purpose than just other moments in your life that are fun. There's, you have to like actually work hard. You can have it all. You can, you can literally have it all if you plan for it. All. I agree. Um, so I'm going to skip to, I don't um, care about the dog. I'm gonna, I'm not, I'm going to yeah. say, so what is your, this was a big question that people asked multiple times about you. What has been your biggest challenge while wedding planning, working full time, having three dogs and running three brands while I'm on maternity leave? Has that been hard for you? I like, I was, I think I was touching on this before. And when I was reading this question, I don't like go into things thinking that they're hard. Like I, I just like never have had that bone in my body where it's like, wow, unless it was like a really hard workout. <laughs> She just, well, she just said hard and bone in the same ew, sentence. Oh, that's not what I meant. But like, um, I truly mean this. Like, I don't really know any other thing I've said besides actually having a really hard workout. Like, I choose in my work life always to like look at things that like I can do it all no matter what and I won't stop. Like, I don't look at the days being like, it's five o'clock, I need to shut my computer and stop. Agreed. Like, I use the whole day. Someday, maybe there might be an hour in the middle of the day where I need to like take a moment and like have a, a funny moment or a joke. But then like when I go home, like I'm still working because like I use the day to my advantage. Well, has it been a lot for you though? Like if you had to be vulnerable and find something like me being not here, has that been difficult I think for you? Th the only thing I could say in a light of like what would be difficult is I like your opinion. Like I care a lot about your opinion and I'm very private. So like there's things that I try to like um, solve on my own without you. But like, I do like your opinion. And I also don't want to like make you feel like you need to give me attention when you're giving attention to two of your kids. So that's you're super considerate about Yeah. That. Like I try to be like, I really want to be, but like, I think the only thing is that like that, that overwhelming thing of like, am I doing everything right? Like that's the only thing. But other than that, like I, I, I just try, like I, oh, I tried to be healthy this quarter and I tried to listen to more books and get education into my own hands. And I tried to, you know, run things by Leland or, you know, someone else that I trust really well, like my team, um, in that way to like get other answers. And so I, I just tried a little bit more to like be a little bit more streamlined, but I would say not having your opinion sometimes definitely gets to me. Cause I'm like, I need to know what she thinks. I need to know what she well, thinks. Well, you definitely have been calling me 100%, and asking. 100%, I but, ask. But I think it goes without saying, maybe it, maybe it does need to be said that like I literally wouldn't be able to take a maternity leave if it wasn't for you. Yeah, and I think there's some things I could not ask you and things I could do better and like plan out a little bit more in my head because I just, I at the end of the day, I just want everything to be great. I want everyone to be happy. Yeah. So like having, having like 30 plus people that like come to you for all of these things and like, that just means that I need to get myself in a better place to be better for them. That's a lot to balance though. I understand that like, I always just want everyone to be happy. It's a lot to balance, but like, I'm so used to it at this point. Like I just look at it as my duty for this, for my life. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Well, like, what a beautiful duty. There's no, there's a, what a <laughs> D O O D Y. There, I just feel like there's no other option. What other option is there? Well, I think the only other alternative would be complaining negativity and portraying your life in a bad way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm happy in my work life. Like, I think when people are like, how are you managing it all? It's like, are you happy? Right. Like, do you, do you are you happy with your I choices? Agree. Are I you agree. happy with your partner? Are you happy with your job? Are you happy with all the things? Like, I'm so happy and content. I, I am too. That, like, I, I just that. manage everything I manage and anything else I can't manage, I'm honest about. Well, also, let's not forget, though, some aspect of that, that happiness comes from perspective. Yeah. Like, we have a handicapped brother. We know, like, the, that it could a, be worse. It's embedded in your yeah. soul to not, like, I'm like, oh, like, I'm walking today. Like I can cognitively use my brain today. I can swallow food on my own today. Like those things literally don't, don't forget though, that perspective is a gift. But so. I even changed the way too. like my friends were literally crying, laughing at me because we were on this trip at Killington and I just am just trying to be like real to like what I'm saying I'm being. And they were like, I'm so tired. And I kept being like, don't say you're tired. Wow. I know. You've become and they, me. And they all were laughing at me. They were like, you're so annoying. Like, it, yeah, you're the annoying one, but it's like, then all of a sudden people catch on and they're like, oh, life can be different. Or like, but in, I used to say like, oh, drinking water is so hard. And I'm like, nope, it's not. Nope, it's not. Nope, it's not. Because Leland also taught me that. She's like, you get to drink water. 
It's a gift. You get to drink water. Right? Like people don't have access to clean water. If you spin your mind to a more grateful life or a more, more grateful for everything, like it just makes things easier easier. I can relate to anybody who, who was a complainer, who saw things negative, And I still do sometimes who like, I'm worried about getting my dress. Of course. Like I'm not this like robot superhuman that like, isn't nervous about those things. It's just like, I'm either doing something about it or I'm not. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't even have anything else to add because I agree with everything you just said. So, so how am I managing it at all? I'm trying to work on my mindset and I'm trying to enjoy. High five. Thank this you. This is fucking sexy. Like, I love hearing you but talk But it's true. Like it, it really is true. It like, is true. And to you say I'm managing it. it all well, do I go home and cry? Sure. Do I go home and, like, fucking need Joe to, like, put me into a cradle and pretend I'm a child, baby, and feed me dinner and, and make me Spoon drink my you. water? Definitely. Do I need alone time? Do I need to do nothing on my weekend sometimes? Yes. Do I need to say no to more things that don't make me happy and don't make me want to go? Do I need to say yes to some things that make me happy and get drunk randomly? hundred percent. I'm a normal 30 year old blackout sometimes. Definitely. Yes. My 30th birthday party with my yeah, sister. Lauren shaking her head. <laughs> do, <laughs> Noah, do you blackout sometimes? Oh, when we were in the Cape, Noah blacked out. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, that was fun for me to watch personally. I really enjoyed that night. Just watching everyone go downhill. Like it was, it's funny when you're pregnant at a bar because all you can see the turn Everything. everyone takes. Like it's like after the third drink, the energy of the room drastically changes. But no, I, I agree with you. You have to know yourself. You have to surrender. You have to be organized. You have to pre be prepared. You have to do all these things if you want to balance it all well. But I also agree with you. Like one of the questions that we'll get to is like people are asking like, do you burn out or do you like snap or do you like have moments? Yes. For me, it comes out in the form of tears. Like I will one day, like I won't, cause I am so hard headed in the sense, like I'm always okay. I'm always fine. I'm always, there's never anything wrong for me one day. Like I'll feel something. I won't know what it is. Maybe I'll get like a twinge in my shoulder. I'll need a massage and then tears will come. Yeah. You, 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 I agree with you. And I, I get that. I think for me, it's more anger, um, than tears, <laughs> um, or like sugar and spice, but I have to get to the root of that. Like my weight was always a root of my irritation and my weight was always a root of something. And it's like, how many years are you just gonna pretend that that's not a problem? Yeah. Carly. And, and like you asked, someone asked me before, like three dogs. Like, it's like, if I chose to, I chose the third dog. I know what it's like to have two. I know what it's like to be a dog owner. I'm not going to fucking take the dog and then complain about it. I'm yeah. not. I'm just not going to do it. Well, complaining to me is a waste of energy. I'm just not going to do it. I took the dog. I take the responsibility. I take accountability. I'm going to take care of that dog this and I'm going to love it. This bitch is fucking fired up. She's ready to go. So I am I right or am I right team? Right. Thank She's you. She's right, motherfucker. Um, all right. So wedding. we talked about your wedding planning and how it affected your schedule. Let me just see where we are. What type of help do you have for your kids and are you breastfeeding? <laughs> that question was asked many times. Um, so I have, um, the first answer I have is my husband. Like Mike is an exceptionally help, helpful person and he does work from home, which is helpful, but also not. And he gets a little frustrated because he's like, I don't have endless time to like help. And he didn't, he well, only, he's working. He only took, they thought this baby was going to come early. They thought Sadie was going to come like a month ahead. And so we took the wrong maternity leaves off. Um, we just listened to the doctors. So we actually, he didn't really have more than a week and a half with me on maternity leave. So it was really, <laughs> uh, you know, an interesting time, but he is super helpful and super caring. And I, we find ways for him to help me and to He's help us dad. as a family yeah. that like him doing the dishes, incredibly helpful to me. I need that done. That is his job. Him doing the trash, picking up the poop in the yard, those things, like the things that he can do. I, I will pay money to watch him pick up the poop in the yard. I need him to do those things, break down the boxes that I order from Amazon, <laughs> all of those things. So like he is super <laughs> helpful in his way that he's helpful. Um, mom, is a nanny two days a week. You know that. Um, my mom is probably one of the keys to my success in terms of helpfulness. Like she, well, you like her help too. Yeah. I mean, she also is super respectful of the way I want my children raised. And I really appreciate that. Um, and I love her company. And then I have a nanny two days a week. So I have help and care four days a week. Um, and that's great. Um, and I definitely surrender to needing help. 
Um, and that is a super helpful thing in the postpartum era is you need to be able to say, I need this. You need to be super expressive and you need to say like, I'm not feeling good about this. This stressed me out. And that is when your partnership with your, whoever you're with, your partner is tested the most. And you have to be able to not make it about you two and your ego. And you have to be able to be like, well, you have tiny things that you need to tiny humans that need our care. I so it's things, tiny things. Um, so, you know, and we, you also have to like agree on what care you'll have, like with your right. partner um, and like what you'll invest in that cost wise, mm. right? Like, is it daycare? Is it a nanny? Is it like, you know, someone retiring? Like, what the hell does this look like? Because, and like, do you really want to be home all week with your kid? You know? So like for me, I know, no, I don't want to be home all week with my babies. I want to give them a lot of my time, a majority of my time, my quality time. But I fucking love work. Like I said. Think about your kids growing up watching you be this like. Oh my God, I'm so happy. That is like literally so cool. I want to teach them. I want to teach them these skills. But also purpose fulfills me. So like the nannies, I love the nannies. Willing to pay for the nannies. Willing to give part of my paycheck up to have the nannies and split that with Mike and do all these things. Peace of mind. And you might not need it forever. Yeah. And no, I'm not breastfeeding. Um, I breastfed for three days with both of my babies because I wanted the bond, the connection. And I wanted them to have the colostrum. But breastfeeding to me uh, is a bitch. Like I I just, A, when my milk came in, it was painful and I didn't want it. Wrapped those motherfuckers up and dried that shit up. You wrapped your tits up? You have to, when you dry your milk, you have to wear a tight bra. Please, please You can't take it off in the shower. You can't take it off to do anything. You have to keep the bra on for two weeks straight. At Noah in the room. And Noah's here. No one needs to learn these things. It's happening. It's coming. It's like a a tidal wave. You got to wrap them up. But no, breastfeeding for me personally was triggering to feel like I didn't have time for myself. And I knew I would be a better mom if I had time for myself. I knew that I could give more to to my children. To their own, honestly, do what feels right to you. Well, that's not the way the vibe is with the the mothers of the world. care. But I, no, I agree completely. I don't don't judge anyone, but anyone's, everyone has their own reasons of why they do things. I'm a better mom when I'm a better person. So like, I'm a better person. All that matters is that you're a better mom. So namaste. No, I'm not breastfeeding. (laughs) Um, so have you, we talked about this a little bit before, but like, have you crashed before trying to do too much? Be vulnerable. Tell me like a moment that you crashed. I, it's it, honestly like it's it's tough like I'm not just saying I'm not just saying this to say all of these things like have what, I what, what's a moment you broke down recently like be have I that. had moments of like did I say the wrong thing or should I not have said that or could have this been better should a process have been better should I have checked myself multiple times before I said yes or no and how to do you that? react to those things like what I think do you at do? first I get a little like defensive because I'm doing so much where I'm like I couldn't uh, be doing more and then I'm like, you're dumb because you just could have done that better from the start. And if you slowed down and shut the hell up, it would have been better. I give myself a lot of tough love. Like that's how I roll with myself and that's how I work because I do that to other people and I do well with that. Like I know I make mistakes and I know I can do things better, but I also don't dwell in it anymore. Yeah. Like I move on and I'm like, okay, you could have done this better. Make a process for it. Put it in your notes. Try this, try that. And I'm still not perfect. So you don't ever feel like you're doing too much. No, I don't know what that means yeah well I think you're living at the pace you want to live at I think there's things that I could pass on and delegate a little bit more to other people and there's some things I am very controlling so there are things I like to do do I ever feel like I'm doing too much in a day maybe there's a day that too much happened and I'm like all right I'm done but like I'm pretty good about like back to the organizing topic, it at the earlier part of this conversation like it's so like there's people like just living in like Amazonian like you know, do you think you're doing too much communities that they're like not doing anything? I just think, I think there's a million ways to live a life Uh, to me. And and no, I definitely do not think I'm doing too much for me. It's about how I'm being proactive about the amount that I'm doing. Um, you're good at proactiveness. I could be definitely better about my proactiveness. I'm a deaf, my, my brand is more reactiveness. Yeah. And I think I could fully work on that. Like today I had to, in order to be here, and to do my morning well, like I had to be super proactive, like in order to look the part, have my outfit. So la- at my day, but you have two kids too. It started last night. Yeah. So. You're, you have two kids. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a lot. It's a different life for me. I have, I, most of my focus is on work right now. Right. And myself. 
but it, I think it, it's ever changing. It's ever shifting. Like last night, what I had to do in order to make it here today is I had to actually lay in bed or I got to lay in bed. Excuse me. Let me fix my language. I had the opportunity to lay in bed with my computer after Sadie was done with her colic hour. And I typed up what I wanted my morning to look like hour by hour. And what I had to do was combine things. So like I knew I wouldn't have time for a meditation. So what I did is at the 530 feeding, I did a meditation while I fed Sadie so I could do two things at once. And then I had her with me when I I did my makeup and hair, but I knew Lauren was feeding for some content for me. So I filmed content while I was doing my makeup. Yeah, you're a beast. And then I knew that I wanted to spend time with Lily. So I wanted to be done getting ready by the time Lily was awake. And then I had breakfast, fed everybody. And then it was your birthday. So you're type A basically. It was your birthday. I wasn't though. I was not type A. I had to become um, it to do I'd it I'd like to just say as your sister, there were parts of you that are. Before- yeah, like all the things that you, there's things, there's differences between us. Like I am definitely more on the chiller side than you, for sure. It's weird that you say that because I'm also more meditative than you. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it as a diss. Like, no, no, no. I'm not saying that as a diss either. Oh, I'm saying like, it's an ironic statement. You, I'm going to say this. You put the work in for your life, for your day to equal out the way you want it to. And like, I'm guess, just, yeah. I'm just like, not that's like, I will never do that. Like, it just does not in my brain work for me. I need to know like, how to my day will have Like to sit here and say that I last night wrote out my day. I'd be like, literally, fuck you. I'm not doing it. <laughs> well, no, you actually I, literally did I say call, fuck Yeah, you. no. But Cause so, I called you so, and so, told you but and that's you what said I'm saying fuck too. you. Like when, when something's too much for me, like I'm my, the way I deal with it is I'm honest. Like I'm not fucking doing that. Like it just, that's just how I roll. Obviously in a professional setting, depending on the scenario, I'll be a little different. But like, am I doing too much in one day? Sure. Am I sometimes not doing enough? Sure. Like, you know what I mean? You're rolling with it. I just roll. <laughs> you take Molly. I'm a roller. Have you ever taken Molly? I took Molly once and I- A little parachute Molly. And it was really bad. I did not enjoy it. I don't like drugs. I'm And I want to recap on the, the wedding weed. planning, like the stressful part. I think the only annoying part about wedding planning is everyone's opinion. That is where it just- I would say it's the politics if I had to it, It's wrap like it up. what we used to do 500 euros ago is maybe not what we do now. Yeah. I would just like to state to the entire world. Thank well, you. It's the politics of the situation and it's making everybody happy. I'm good. I'm going to make myself happy. Yeah. So basically like if you had to give your best hack to remain peaceful, one thing I think you just said is put blinders on and do what works for you. I think I haven't always done this, but can speak to it for the past maybe quarter is that like put the work in. <gasps> yeah, Arnie, I said that it. cannot be your put answer. Put the work in of the stressors of your life. Like, no, I'm making you rephrase it right now. And we're keeping that part for the record because I want viewers and listeners to know that you've said that on okay. every episode. So fuck no. everyone. And <laughs> what I would like to say is those little th things in your ear or in your brain or those little worries that you have or the little things that make you anxious on a daily basis, like write it down if you don't know what it is or think about it. You don't need to write it. Figure out what your core issues are and actually make changes. Wait, you had sent me a piece of content that I actually was eating up the other day and I want to read it right now because I think it was really, really valuable. You just have to like, literally I think Julie Moran said this to me yesterday. She was like, you're either going to put the work in to be skinny or you're not, or like whatever you want to be, not skinny, just like healthy, whatever feels right to you. And I'm like, I agree a hundred percent. I'm either going to, you know, like drink the water and go to the gym and like do these things. Yeah. Either shut the fuck up and do it or just it's shut just the like, fuck up. It's just, I'm going to do it or not. Like, um, all right. So this was the post the other day. I actually loved this so much. It said, if you can't meditate, pause before every sip of coffee. If you can't pray, simply say thank you before every meal. If you can't manifest, enjoy what's already yours. And if you can't journal, talk to yourself while you're driving in the car. There is no spirituality rule book. Just show up for yourself in ways that feel good to you. That was by Vex King on Brandon Collin Collinsworth Instagram. What is your best hack to do a lot, but re to hacks to do a lot, but remain peaceful? If I had to give one word, it would be consistency because you can do something a lot for one week to remain peaceful. But if you stop doing it, then you're just going back to your old habits. Yeah. And for me, what works is consistency. I don't think I could sum mine up in one word because- it's hard. I talk a lot, but I would say it's a combination of preparedness, <laughs> organization, um, manifestation, 
uh, I would say combining tasks like if I don't have time to work out, which I don't have time to work out right now, taking my kids for a walk to get steps in. For sure. That's a, um, that's a workout. Finding time for things and like being proactive. Also like projecting what I need to achieve in a day. And lastly, I would say it's communication and expressiveness. Like I will openly say to Mike, I need help right now. I agree with the communication and the honesty. I think it's, I think we gave a lot of tips around this topic because yeah. it's not one thing it's impossible because when you are balancing a lot and you, there's a lot going on like you have to, there's many tactics to make it better yeah and I think um being peaceful on a daily basis is not always going to happen like you're not always going to be peaceful every single day like there's yeah, going to no, be I don't feel peaceful there's going to day you wake up and you're like today I'm just like fucking I will say though the things pissy. that the things that always remain for me are, I know this is for some, they may not understand this is nature. Like for me, I always have to remind myself to look up and like, I always have to remind myself I'm small. So like, yes, I get sometimes in the heat of the moment, I'm balancing a lot. There's a lot going on. There will be moments where both girls are screaming, crying and my dogs are barking and the landscapers outside and Mike's frustrated about something. And I'm like, oh my God, 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 Nope, we're going to do one thing at a time. I'm going to surrender to the moment. I'm mean, going to be peaceful. And then I look up at the sky and I'm like, I am so small. I'm floating on a rock in the universe. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. In 200 years, every person I know will be gone, maybe actually in 100 years. And one day this will all just have been a blip of time. So for me, it's just like, no, let me come back to the moment and realize this chaos that I'm feeling right now. No, it's not going to stress me out. I'm going to embrace it. And books, actually, education has helped me. Yeah. I, I forgot about that. Like listening to other people talk about findings or research or connection. Like, yeah. Like it just, I feel like Noah's instilled that in us. He likes education a lot. Never. Oh, okay. I guess we'll keep that part. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So we talked, we covered a lot. Um, the last question that was on this list was, do we see Lily and Sadie as the future of the business? For sure. Actually, my answer was, if I don't want, I don't care. <laughs> um, the answer is no one gives a fuck. Yeah, no, the answer is if that's what floats their boat, but I want them to work and love their passion. I will say Lily's a bossy ass bitch. So she is. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, what, like they, I think they want to know, like, do we see them following in our footsteps as like sisters? I think we should let them decide that. For me, I want them to find what fuels them and ignites them. And if that's this, then I'll cater them to learn that. I can't say one thing that they will not have a choice on is they will learn how to meditate and use their breath and they will learn business process no matter <laughs> what. So to wrap things up, balancing it all is possible, but not always consistently, even in your mindset of it all, but you just got to surrender. Well, we have two very way different ways. Like you're pro I love that you're proactive and I'm more like, it is what it is. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. And I think I'm sure that's how most people are. It's either they're like me or they're like you. Good point, Diane. <laughs> Diane. Well, season two started. Here we go. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Love you. We happy love 30th you. birthday to me. Happy birthday. And happy birthday to Parlor. Happy birthday to Five you. years of Parlor. Over and out. We love Parlor. <laughs> <laughs>